interested to see who you blame. The IMF team, under William Brandt's watch, is trying to intercept a dangerous stash of nerve gas on a plane bound for Russia. Benji, an IMF agent, is keeping an eye on the plane from a distance with no sign of Ethan, their top agent. Luther, currently on a mission in Malaysia, taps into communications, revealing that the only way to stop the plane is to hack its controls via a Russian satellite, which they lack authorization for. As the plane starts to take off, Luther hacks the satellite, giving Benji the opportunity to access the plane. Suddenly, Ethan appears, demanding Benji to open the door, and leaps onto the moving plane. With the team shouting at Benji to open the door, he succeeds, alerting the pilots. In mid-flight, Benji manages to open the cargo door, attracting the pilots' attention. Eventually, he opens the side door, allowing Ethan to slip inside. Ethan secures himself under the weapons and escapes the plane after a successful mission. When Ethan, using an IMF front, goes to collect his mission briefing, the skeptical agent there hears stories of Ethan's heroics, unsure if they're too good to be true. Ethan plays the IMF message, revealing that the weapons belong to a covert group called the Syndicate. Suddenly, the message takes a dark turn, with the Syndicate claiming to have infiltrated the IMF, warning Ethan of their imminent elimination. Gas fills the room, and an unseen assassin, holding the IMF agent at gunpoint, coldly shoots her. Despite Ethan's struggle, the gas eventually renders him unconscious. Meanwhile, in Washington, D.C., Brandt faces a board inquiry into the IMF's past actions. CIA Director Alan Hunley highlights the extensive damage caused by the IMF, asserting that the organization should be dissolved and absorbed into the CIA. The chairman, in agreement with Hunley, rules in his favor. Ethan regains consciousness in a room, bound to a post, where a woman and Russian gangsters prepare to torture him. Recognizing one of the men as winner, a supposedly deceased mercenary also known as the Bone Doctor, Ethan is subjected to a beating. Unbeknownst to the attackers, the woman discreetly seizes the key to Ethan's restraints and signals him. Seizing the opportunity, Ethan knocks out Winner, and with the woman's assistance, defeats the other assailants. As guards outside the room become aware of the disturbance, the woman leads Ethan through a passageway, locking him on the other side of a gate. Her cover intact, she urges Ethan to escape and returns to her team. They open fire on Ethan but fail to hit him. In a secure location, Ethan contacts Brandt, informing him of the IMF breach. He warns Brandt about the Syndicate's reality and advises him to investigate Winner. However, Brandt reveals that the IMF has been disbanded, leaving Ethan on his own. Brandt urges Ethan to locate the cloaked man. As Hunley enters the room, demanding Ethan's whereabouts, Brandt suggests he might be hunting the Syndicate. Hunley, unaware of the Syndicate, believes the IMF created the organization to sustain itself. Despite Brandt's assurance that Ethan won't be found easily, Hunley is determined to track him down. Six months later in Cuba, Hunley and his team believe they have tracked Ethan to an apartment and send in a team to apprehend him. Unbeknownst to them, Ethan is in Paris, working out, while the CIA team bursts into the empty apartment. Ethan, remotely watching them on cameras inside the room, reveals a collection of news clippings and photographs of suspected syndicate members he has been tracking. Benji, now relegated to a desk job, receives a letter announcing his win of a trip to a famous opera and is thrilled. In a meeting with Hunley, he faces accusations of secretly aiding Ethan but passes a polygraph test. Donning a suit, Benji heads to a Paris train station, where a hooded figure hands him a package containing glasses. When he puts them on, Ethan communicates with him, sending a drawing of the cloaked man and requesting help to track him down. As the opera is about to begin, a tall blonde man with a briefcase of supposed instruments enters. Benji breaks into the server room, hacking into the security feed using his high-tech invitation. The opera starts, and Benji scans the audience, searching for the man. Meanwhile, Ethan positions himself on the upper deck, directly above the Chancellor of Austria, a suspected syndicate target. Benji, checking the cameras, spots the tall blonde Russian and guides Ethan to his location. Ethan begins to follow the man as the opera unfolds. Spotting the woman who previously saved him in an elegant dress, Ethan observes her assembling a sniper rifle overlooking the Chancellor. Simultaneously, the blonde man positions himself, assembling his own rifle. Ethan confronts the assassin, and a fierce struggle ensues, with the taller and stronger adversary taking the upper hand. Meanwhile, an unknown man watches the fight through the assassin's contacts. Spotting another Russian assassin aiming at the Chancellor, Ethan defeats him and grabs his gun. In a crucial moment, he notices the woman also aiming, uncertain of whom to target. Ethan shoots the Chancellor in the arm, causing both assassins to miss their shots. As the woman shoots at Ethan and the Russian fires at her, Benji bursts into the room, 
tackling the Russian. The woman shoots the Russian dead before escaping the platform. Cops flood the building, blocking her exit, but Ethan offers assistance. Using a rope, they run to the roof, managing to escape before the cops corner them. Meanwhile, the Chancellor and his team make their getaway from the opera, but a bomb inside his car explodes, killing him. Benji arrives in a car, picking up Ethan and the woman, who is visibly annoyed since she attempted to shoot him. Introducing herself as Ilsa Faust, a deep cover MI6 intelligence agent, she explains that she had to kill the Chancellor to regain the trust of her employers. Removing her gadgets, Ethan and Ilsa realize they are being followed by a van of armed men who open fire on the car. To maintain her cover, Ilsa dives from the car. Attempting to escape from CIA headquarters, Hunley learns of the Chancellor's death and Benji's presence, leading him to prioritize Ethan as the top target with orders to shoot on sight. Ethan and Benji abandon the car and head to one of Ethan's safe houses. Ethan provides Benji with fake travel documents, instructing him to return to DC and inform the CIA that Ethan tried to recruit him. Reluctant to betray his friend, Benji hesitates, but Ethan reveals that the man in the code is responsible for recent covert actions disguised as casualties. Ethan shares a list of syndicate agents who are technically deceased, indicating their first step is to track down Ilsa. Benji notices her lipstick is a USB drive. Ilsa returns to syndicate headquarters to report to the man in charge, who is revealed to be a rogue MI6 agent named Solomon Lane. He questions Ilsa's loyalty after Ethan's escape but she reassures him, revealing she has laid a trail for Ethan to follow. Benji discovers information about a secret facility in Morocco housing a digital ledger belonging to the syndicate. They drive to Morocco, meeting Ilsa at a villa. Ilsa discloses Solomon's identity and her undercover mission from MI6 to identify syndicate members. Solomon's digital ledger, stolen from him, is held in the secure facility on her flash drive. In an attempt to retrieve it, Solomon sent Ilsa on the mission, acknowledging its impossibility. Meanwhile, Brant meets with Luther, informing him of Ethan being hunted by the CIA and enlisting Luther to find him. Initially reluctant, Luther refuses to help, believing Ethan can handle the situation. Brant, however, explains that the CIA aims to kill Ethan and Benji, prompting Luther to change his mind with a warning not to betray him. In Morocco, the trio plans to send Benji into the facility. To do so, they need to load his biometric profile into the system stored underwater, where oxygen tanks can't be used. Benji insists Ethan can accomplish this without needing to breathe. Ethan and Ilsa skydive under the facility, while Benji approaches the gates for access. Positioned above the water intake, Ethan changes into a wetsuit and loads up with oxygen. Launching into the water intake, he reaches the profile storage, about to change the profile successfully when a mechanical arm hits him. The facility's scientists restore the water intake, sending Ethan into a spin. Benji arrives at the biometric scans just as Ethan manages to change the profiles. Ethan attempts to escape but runs out of oxygen and passes out. Ilsa rescues him, reviving Ethan as Benji joins them, celebrating their success in obtaining the ledger. However, Ilsa unexpectedly knocks out Benji and escapes with the information. Outside, syndicate members intercept her. Ilsa joins them, suiting up for a planned escape, but she suddenly knocks down their bikes and rides off. Ethan and Benji chase her in their car, taking a sharp corner to find Luther and Brant awaiting them, guiding them to Morocco. Joining the chase, the bikers open fire on both Ilsa and Ethan, forcing Ethan to take a side street. Some bikers follow, but Ethan's impressive driving skills knock them off their bikes. He throws the car into reverse, escaping gunfire before launching off a platform, flipping the car multiple times. As a biker approaches the crashed car, ready to end them, Brant intervenes, sending the biker to an unexpected meeting with Destiny. Ethan sees Ilsa being chased by bikers and jumps on a nearby bike. Evading gunfire, he catches up with Ilsa, knocking off the remaining pursuer. Pushing the bike to its limits, he's shocked to see Ilsa standing in the road, causing him to crash. Ilsa then jumps back onto her bike and rides away. Brant, Benji, and Luther arrive at their safe house, where Ethan sits in silence and defeat. Benji reveals he made a copy of the ledger, sparking an idea for Ethan. In England, Ilsa hands over the drive to the MI6 chief, who doubts its authenticity, citing Solomon's expertise in manipulation. The chief suggests Ilsa return to the syndicate and kill Ethan to regain Solomon's trust. Ilsa refuses, but the chief hints at her ability to disappear, given that few people know she exists. Back in Morocco, the team realizes the ledger is encrypted with the biometrics of the Prime Minister of Britain. They deduce that Solomon used them to access the ledger and is planning to target the Prime Minister. Ilsa brings the disc to Solomon, only to discover it's empty. Solomon refuses to disclose its actual content. Ethan tracks down Ilsa, who initially thinks he knew the disc was blank. After reflecting, 
She realizes her agency chief wiped the disk. Allah reveals that Solomon left a message for Ethan and presents a device scrambling their comms. They realize Benji is missing and race to the parking garage, witnessing a van speeding away with him. Solomon calls Ethan, demanding the disk to save Benji. Ethan decides to reach the Prime Minister before Solomon, aware that it plays into Solomon's hands. Brent contacts Hunley, who is on his private airplane, revealing their location. Hunley wants to end things but aims to prevent harm to his friends. Benji is taken to a room with Vinter and Solomon present. Solomon orders his men to prepare Benji. Hunley lands in London, meeting Brandt during an auction attended by the British PM. Hunley spots the MI6 chief, informing him of Ethan's plan to kidnap the Prime Minister. The MI6 chief sets up a meeting with the PM, and Brandt informs him of Ethan's attempt to dismantle the syndicate. The PM recognizes the name Solomon, revealing that the syndicate was created by the MI6 chief to utilize former intelligence agents for missions without oversight. The files Benji stole from the vault turn out to be an immense secret budget that could fund the syndicate for decades. The Prime Minister rejects the offer, but the MI6 chief, despite denying the syndicate's existence, proceeds with the plan. When the Prime Minister attempts to leave, Hunley stops him, warning of Ethan's exceptional skills and ability to be anywhere or anyone. Suddenly, the MI6 chief shoots the PM with a truth-tracking dart, revealing himself to be Ethan in disguise. Holding Hunley at gunpoint, Ethan contacts Luther, who, along with Brandt, scans and uploads the PM's biometrics. The real MI6 chief arrives at the auction and heads to the room. Brandt prompts the PM to say the passphrase, unlocking files disclosing secret bank accounts worldwide. The MI6 chief and bodyguards negotiate, but Brandt and Ethan track the guards and use a truth serum dart on the chief. Ethan learns that the chief created the syndicate, but Solomon turned it against him, confirming the revelation. Hundley is taken aback but gains respect for Ethan's determination. Ethan calls Solomon to set up an exchange for Benji but decides to destroy the data, preventing Solomon from accessing the money. At the meeting place, Ethan sees both Benji and Elsa. Benji wears wires, a camera contact lens, and a powerful bomb strapped to his chest. Solomon brags about the plan's success, but Ethan knows Solomon will stop at nothing for the money. He reveals that he'll use this to catch Solomon. When Solomon demands the disc, Ethan claims it's all in his head, stating that killing Benji would leave him with nothing. With no choice, Solomon disarms the bomb. Ethan instructs Ilsa to shoot him if his men get too close, demanding Solomon release Benji. Solomon complies, providing the code to remove the vest. Benji gets free, and Solomon orders his men to kill Ilsa and capture Ethan. Ethan shields Ilsa from gunfire, and they manage to ambush and eliminate guards before escaping in an alley. Ethan tackles a man through a window, and Ilsa faces off against Vinter, ultimately killing him in a knife battle. As Ethan makes his escape, Solomon finds and chases him, shooting at him. Ethan escapes down a hole, but Solomon catches up, only to fall into a trap set by Ethan's team, a bulletproof glass cage. Solomon shoots the glass in frustration, but the team gasses him until he passes out, mirroring Solomon's earlier tactics. Having witnessed an IMF success, Hunley returns to the Senate committee, claiming their prior meeting was a pretext to help Ethan expose and dismantle the syndicate. He convinces the committee to restore the IMF. After the meeting, Brandt welcomes Hunley as the new IMF secretary.